Hello everybody and welcome to another Corona tutorial. In this one, we're going to be talking about the Corona to Vantage Live Link, which is new functionality that got added in Corona 12 update one. Now, what this thing does is it basically establishes a live link between your DCC tool and Vantage, which means any changes you make to your scene will get updated, transferred over to Vantage. And again, this works as a live link, so it doesn't require you to uh, export and re-export your scene anytime you make a change to it. Now, what that then enables you to do is a couple of different things. It basically opens up a couple of different workflows for you. So one, just as an example, right, you can now uh, work in your C uh, work in your DCC tool on your scene, right, uh, but have Vantage open on the side. And because of LiveLink, every change that you make to your scene, uh, Vantage will reflect that. The change is going to get transferred over uh, to Vantage, right? And so now you can use Vantage's uh, real-time renderer uh, to kind of uh, get a preview of your scene out, right? So you can use it as this sort of uh, viewport enhancement, if you will. Now, what's extra cool about it is that, for example, if you just want to send a couple of previews to your client, you can just save whatever you see in Vantage and send those out uh, to your client. That's useful, for example, in cases where you don't need the for full offline render Corona-esque quality for your previews, right? Right. And maybe just as another workflow example, uh, let's say you're working in, on your scene in your DCC tool, right? But you ultimately want to render it out in Vantage. Well, then in this case, you can use the DCC tool you know well and you like, right? Um, and you can continue using Corona. And at the same time, you can see how the scene is going to look like, exactly how it's going to look like in Vantage because of the live link. Right. So ultimately, what, for example, you can do is you can work on your scene with live link enabled. And then when you're ready to make your, your final Vantage specific changes, you just export the scene out of your DCC tool, out of Corona, import it to Vantage, make the final changes. But you already know how things are going to look like because you've used live link. Right. Right. OK, so hopefully you now have a pretty good idea of just how useful this new functionality is. And so that's pretty much the intro to this tutorial. And so now uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, check out how you can actually start using LiveLink. OK, so to get LiveLink going, uh, all you have to do is you need to open up your render setup uh, settings, I suppose. Then go under the system menu here and just click on the Vantage LiveLink button. As soon as you do that, uh, the scene is going to get exported out of 3ds Max and into Vantage. Vantage is going to automatically start for you. As you can see, that's what's happening for me here as well. Uh, it just happened off screen, so apologies for that. And this whole export import process might take a second or a couple of seconds or a little bit more. It does depend on the complexity of your scene. In our case here, our scene is sort of moderately complex, but as you can see, it will load up real fast here. Right now, as you can see, uh, now live link is working. Uh, this message down here in the viewport is there to let you know that indeed live link has been successfully established. Uh, and now what you can do as well, you can make any changes to your scene inside of 3ds Max. And, uh, you know, uh, you're going to see all of that updated in Vantage, right, including moving around your perspective viewport camera right so pretty fun stuff but now if you want to disable the live link you can do that at any point just go back into your render setup under the system menu and just hit the stop live link button as soon as you do that this message is going to disappear now live link is no longer active and if you now make any changes to your scene in 3ds max uh, it's not going to get transferred over into vantage right because live link is now disabled and now, if you would like to re-enable LiveLink, re-establish it, you can again just go back in your render setup here and hit the Vantage LiveLink button. Uh, then the scene is again going to get exported out of 3ds Max and imported into Vantage. Now, if you already have a Vantage instance open, like we do here, uh, then the LiveLink is going to hook up to that instance. It's not going to open up another Vantage instance for you, right? Now, the export import pro import process as we already mentioned might take a second depends on the complexity of your scene but before you know it it's going to be up and running there we go and we can again start making changes to our scene and see those changes be reflected in our vantage instance here 
So just to illustrate some of the things that you can do, well, you can, for example, you know, move stuff around in your scene and see that be updated in Vantage. Uh, you can uh, switch between different cameras and you're going to be able to see that that gets reflected in Vantage as well. You can then also, for example, you know, mess with your materials. In this case, we're just going to sample this countertop marble material and we're going to make it, well, we'll just make it uh, super dark, right? And as you can see, uh, that gets updated uh, in Vantage in real time, right? Uh, then what you can also do, for example, is you can, well, you can create new objects. So let's create a teapot in the middle of the room because that's very aesthetic. Uh, we can create a new corner physical material here as well, apply it to the teapot. As you can see, that's that gets updated as you would expect. You can create new light sources. So let's create a new corner light here. Uh, let's move it around. Let's maybe adjust its settings. So you can do all that, right? and see it be updated in real time in Vantage. So really, really cool stuff. Okay, now as the name suggests, Live Link is a live link between the scene in your DCC tool and Vantage. But one thing uh, that you need to keep in mind here is that it's a one-way street. So the change that changes that you're making to your scene in your DCC tool, those will get transferred over to Vantage. But if you make any changes to your scene, in Vantage, well, those won't get transferred over back to the scene in your DCC tool because remember, it's a one-way street from your DCC tool and into Vantage. So that's a pretty important bit to keep in mind. Now, there are also some limitations that you probably should keep in mind. So, uh, you know, whenever you're exporting your Corona scene and importing it into Vantage, so whenever you're not using LiveLink, any limitations that apply to that workflow also apply to LiveLink. So just as an example, right, uh, Vantage is a real-time render, and the way that it does mapping is quite a bit different than how Corona does it, right? And so uh, what happens is you can, depending on the mapping properties and the mapping types you're using, uh, you can uh, sometimes you will be able to notice that the mapping in Vantage does not match the mapping that you see in Corona. And to an extent, uh, you can say the same for the materials as well. So materials rendered in Vantage are going to look a little bit differently than they do in Corona because, uh, well, uh, you know, the, these are two different render engines. One is the real-time render engine, the other is an offline render engine. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. But those are those are more of the general limitations. Um, a more LiveLink specific limitation that we would like to mention comes into play with whenever you're using complex chaos scatters. Uh, so those might need a little bit longer to update because essentially what at the moment needs to happen is whenever you tweak a scatter, uh, if it's really complex, it needs to be recalculated and all of that needs to be uh, sent in its entirety uh, from the DCC tool from Corona uh, to Vantage, right? And then obviously uh, needs some time to complete, right? Uh, so that's something that we're looking at improving. But, you know, at the moment, we would just like to mention that it is a current limitation. And so maybe these are just some general limitations that you should keep in mind for whenever you're working with LiveLink. Okay, so if at any point you're happy with your current setup and want to do a Vantage render, well, then you can at any point just go into Vantage and hit the render button and render it from the current angle um, you're in, right? So you can do that with the usual Vantage workflow. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, just watch our original Vantage tutorial or, you know, just read the documentation on our docs pages for Vantage, that is. Um, alternatively, if you are, for example, working in your scene in 3ds Max, because that's where you're comfortable with and you've got LiveLink enabled, and then at some point you want to make some final adjustments in Vantage and then export stuff out of Vantage uh, that way. You can do that, but at that point, what you got to do first is you got to stop the live link and then export the scene or export plus render. If you want to know the difference between these two buttons, again, watch our original Vantage tutorial. But um, uh, then what you can do is you can export the scene and just continue working in it in Vantage if that's what you'd like to do, right? Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about animations and how they work with live link. At the moment, um, you can jump between keyframes uh, while LiveLink is active, and you can expect the scene to transfer over fine, as long as the animation itself is supported. Uh, now, uh, whether it is supported or not, you should consult the Vantage documentation and all that. But um, in practice, most of the animations coming from your DCC tool uh, are going to be supported. 
Now, unfortunately, what doesn't quite work well yet is the ability for you to scrub the timeline in your DCC tool and see that scrubbing be updated in Vantage. So right now we have a camera move set up here. The camera is just going to move forward. And what, we're, what I'm going to do next here is I'm just going to start scrubbing the timeline. And as you can see, that's going to be a really sort of slow process. It's not going to be fluid at all. That's something that we are actively looking to improve. But unfortunately, right now, scrubbing the timeline probably best if you avoid it. Now, what's happening essentially is that when you scrub the timeline for each new frame, the scene gets uh, sort of re-exported and resent to Vantage. Um, and so that obviously takes time, right? So it's not a very fluid experience and the UI might lock up on you depending on how complex your scene is. So it's something that we are definitely looking at improving. Now that said, as you've probably noticed, ultimately uh, the image in Vantage, sort of the, the movement, the animation that we made in our scene here, got carried over to Vantage. So in our case here, the movement of the camera got updated, right? It just took a while. And so you can, uh, you can jump from frame to frame in your timeline and see that be updated advantage. Uh, it's just scrubbing won't be a very... Uh, very fluid experience and just going to a different keyframe depending on the complexity of your scene because the entire scene needs to be uh, re-exported and resent to Vantage, that whole process might take more time um, than we would like. Now, what is also important to note is that you cannot render out your DCC setup animations in Vantage. So you can render out individual frames, but you cannot render an animation from start to finish because you can't transfer at the moment you can't transfer that animation uh, that full animation over to Vantage. Now as always we are looking at improving things and animations and live link um, are something that we are focused on. Now we're not we can't quite share anything yet uh, but you know we are looking at further um, enhancing the interop here. All right. And with that, we are concluding this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you've learned something new and we really hope you like this new functionality. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.